Hello kids, how are you doing today? Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're on lesson six, fossil fuels. So in this lesson, we will focus on, let's learn about how plants from long ago can cause pollution today. And of course, pollution is not good for our bodies. So our topic, our subject is health, right? So that's what we'll be talking about in this lesson. Let's take a look here. First of all, what are fossil fuels? There are many kinds of fossil fuels. In this video here, we can see these machines working in a field or in a plane. What are these machines doing? They're getting oil from the ground. They're pumping up oil from deep underground. And oil, oil is a fossil fuel. We make gas out of oil, right? Uh, kyung, kyung yu, I think you say in Korean, kyung yu, right? Uh, where you go to the Jujuso, the gas station, and you get fuel, right? So oil is made into gas. It's a type of fossil fuel. Also, we'll look at other types of fossil fuels in this lesson. Okay, our first word for the vocabulary, he's very happy, he's very proud. I hope you get the same thing. He got an A plus, yay, right? It can be done. Yes, you can get an A plus. It is possible. Yes, you can do it, right? It's possible, you can do it. You can do it, it is possible. Okay, number two. Wow, very exciting picture. Of course, he is a firefighter, firefighter. And the word, though, is not firefighter, it is to need. Now, when we say to need, what's another word for that? It's require. A firefighter needs water to put out the fire. He requires water to put out the fire, to require. Now, maybe a little difficult pronunciation, re require require so to require is to need something you say piliohada right piliohada i need it i need it i require it it i must have it okay number three this is a big city looks like new york central park is in the background but when we talk about all big cities any big city connected with a city connected with a city we say urban urban. So if you live in a city, you are living in an urban setting. You are living in an urban setting. But if you live on a farm in the countryside, you are living in a rural setting. So urban and rural, rural, pandero, right? They are opposites. So I live in a city, I live in an urban place or setting. I live in a farm. I live in a rural place or setting. Okay, so rural is countryside, urban is city. Okay, number four, having to do with factories. So when we say, when we talk about factories and factories that are making things and machines, the process of manufacturing, we're usually talking about industrial uh, topics or industrial things. Industrial is an adjective having to do with factories. Uh, uh, this job is an industrial job, right? Uh, this uh, business deal is an industrial business deal having to do with factories. Industrial, industrial, industrial. Okay, so the pronunciation, it's a long word. Industrial. Industrial. Okay. Okay, next one, number five. Well, this is very interesting. What is this? If we look closely, this is rock, right? It's, part, it's a piece of rock, but there's some strange, ooh, it looks kind of scary. It's a spider, right? It's a spider that died a long, long time ago. And at long time ago, this rock was mud. It was soft. 
and the spider's body laid there and got covered with mud and got pressed and because of the pressure it turned into rock so that all that is left of the spider is this form or this shape in the rock. It's all that remains. All that remains. The remains of the spider is all that is left of this spider is the shape of the spider in the rock. So if something is gone, something is, it goes away or something dies, sometimes there are, there's a little bit that remains from that thing that died a long time ago. Remains, remains. Okay, next one, number six, uh, to come together. When things come together, what do they do? They form something, okay? So they form a field. They might form a landscape. When you put like wood and concrete and other materials together, you can form a house or a building. It's when you make, you have many things or materials come together, they form or make or create some other thing. They form something. Okay. Seven, are you hungry? Looks like somebody's cooking something, right? A series of actions or changes. When you cook something, you're doing a series of actions. Step one, step two, step three. You follow many actions or changes, different steps. We call all of those steps together, that's called a process. What is the process of making chocolate chip cookies? What is the process of making a pancake? You follow the different steps. Those steps are a process. How to do something. Okay, next one. Number eight. Maybe your mom or dad does this a lot. Maybe you do it, right? If the light goes out in your room, you know, you flip the switch, it doesn't work. It's time to change something for something else. So you take the old light bulb. It's a light bulb, by the way. You take the old light bulb and you put a new light bulb in its place. What are you doing? You are replacing. Replace the old one uh, with a new one. You replace the old one, get rid of the old one, put a new one, you replace it. Replace the old one with a new one. Replace the old light bulb with a new light bulb. Okay, number nine, to let go, right? Very interesting picture. I think it's been photoshopped. Okay, but anyway, this person is letting these doves, these birds go, right? To let go means to release, let go, right? If you love something, release it. If it comes back to you, it loves you too. But if it doesn't come back, it never was to be. Oh, well. So anyway, to release something, to release, let it go. Let it go. Release it. Release. Release. Let it go. Number 10, to save. Now, this looks strange. What are they saving? Well, they're saving. What, what are they doing? They're digging in the ground. They're going to plant trees or bushes. So they are trying to save the earth. So what are they doing? They are conserving, especially when we talk about protecting the environment or trying to save the earth. We are talking about conserving the earth. Now you can also conserve other things. If you are careful with the electricity you use in your house, turn off the light when you leave the room. You want to conserve electricity. If you want to conserve water, when you wash your hands, don't run the water the whole time. Run the water, get your hands wet, turn it off, use soap, then turn it on again and wash the soap off. Conserve water, save water, save electricity, save the earth, conservation project, okay? Conserve, conserve is the way we pronounce that. Eleven. Ooh, what's that? Doesn't look very pretty, but it's very important. A black stone burned for heat. What do we call it? We call it coal. C is a hard K sound. K. Coal. Coal. Coal is a black stone, like we see in this picture, and we burn it for heat. Uh, if you go to, uh, uh, what do you say, bulgogi or gogi jeep? 
bulgogi jeep, you want to get bulgogi, or uh, some places where they have the, the, the outside barbecue, right? They put coal in the fire underneath and they burn it, right? And that's an example of coal. You can see it every day, right? So black stone burned for heat is coal. Coal is very important for our, our modern life. Next one, uh, you don't worry about this. You're not driving, but when you get older, you have to be careful. Look at the gas, right? Because when you become, when you, when you use up all the gas, you use up all the gas, no more, ta opsayo, right? <laughs> then you have run out of gas, run out, run out. And the way to use it, run out of momo, run out of gas, run out of food, run out of water. That means you used it all up. You used it, now it's all gone. We can use up all the water, we can use up all the food in your refrigerator, we can use up all the electricity, right? That means we don't have any more. It's opsayo, ta opsayo. We run out. Okay. Number 13, to make dirty. Imagine that this is not water. Maybe this is some chemical that's coming out of these pipes into the stream. It's making the stream or the river dirty. What is it doing? It's polluting. So when uh, we make the environment dirty, we are polluting the environment. And sometimes factories or industrial places uh, industrial companies will pollute the environment because of what they're doing. Their activities make dirty water, it makes dirty air, or it makes things that we throw away in the ground, so dirty land. It, if we make something dirty, we are polluting the environment. Pollute. Pollute. Okay, next one. Fuel. That was very fast. Fuel is very energetic, isn't it? So it jumps on the screen. Okay. Something that produces heat or power is fuel. And it's interesting to look at this picture because you say, well, where's the fuel? It's not an engine. He's using his legs. The fuel is inside his body. He ate breakfast that morning. The breakfast is the fuel. The food that we eat helps us produce heat or, in this case, power right? When we put gas in our car, that's the fuel that makes the engine go. It gives it power to the engine. So fuel, there's many kinds of fuel, right? And this word, of course, is fuel. Okay, next one. A oh, very peaceful picture, very nice picture. Looks like the American West. Looks like where I'm from, okay? A part of a place. If we look at this very wide landscape, very big what? Very big area. An area is a part of a place, right? So the area in your house, right? That's an area. Your bedroom is an area. Your kitchen is an area. It's part of a place. Okay, wow, this is a very exciting picture, right? This looks like it's downtown in a very large town. Downtown in a very large town. But what's a very large town? A very large town, we have a special word for that, right? If there's just a few people living together, just a few houses, we say that's a village. Okay, it's a village. If a few more houses, a few more buildings, we can say it's a town. But more and more like this, huge buildings, very tall buildings, millions of people living together, we say that is a city. So village, town, city. Okay. Okay, let's go over the uh, vocabulary. Here we have an interesting and exciting, a fun vocabulary exercise. It's a puzzle, and this is a crossword puzzle that you have in your book. Uh, we could say it's a crossword. Americans say crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzle. So our uh, object is to solve the puzzle. We say it's crossword because you have words that go down and you have words that go across, right? And you have to fill in the boxes with the letters. Crossword. One down and across. 
First, we start with a cross, the clues for a cross. Now, these are the words that we're going to put in the crossword puzzle. There are eight words. Let's go over them first. Possible, possible, require, require, urban, urban, industrial, industrial, remains, remains, form, form, process, process, and replace, replace. Those are the words we need to fit into the crossword puzzle. Now, when you do a crossword puzzle, usually they give you the clues for the words that are going across, and then in the next section, they give you clues for words that go down in the puzzle, right? Down. First, we're going to talk about the words that are going across. For these clues, we have pictures, okay? So for number one, we have a picture. That is our clue. This is a picture of a city. Now, when we talk about the city setting, right, what do we say? I taught you two words, right? First, I taught you in the city, you say it's urban, and in the countryside, you say it's rural. But this is a city, so this is the word we need, urban. And we can see U R B A N one two three four five one two three four five. That's an important point about crossword puzzles. You have to fit the same number of letters, the same number of letters in the blank. So you're looking for a five-letter word that goes with this picture. Let's see that in number three. Going across number three, we have one, two, three, four. A four-letter word that matches this picture. Remember we talked about this picture? When things come together, they do something, right? What do they do? They form something. So they form a field or they form a landscape to form. Okay, next one. Number seven. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. A ten letter word. We're looking for a ten letter word that goes with this picture. So, which is a ten letter word that goes with this picture? In this picture, we can see this is the inside of a factory. So, having to do with factories, remember the word? We said that was industrial. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's our ten letter word that matches the picture. Okay? Number eight. Aha, uh -huh. we're following a certain series of steps to cook something or, you know, to make something. It doesn't have to be cooking. It can be anything. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven words. Where is a seven letter word that mean, has to do with this picture? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha, uh -huh. that's our word. It is process, process. Of course, you can't just do the, the number of words, you have to make sure it matches the picture, right? A process is a series of steps that you do, a series of actions or changes to do something. Okay, that was the words that were across. They all had pictures. Now we're looking at the words that go down in the, in the puzzle. The words that go down, the clues are part of a sentence. It's like filling in the blank, except in this case, the blank is the box, right? The box is for each letter of the word. What word makes sense in this sentence? Babies beep, care, and attention. Babies need something, right? Babies need care and attention. What's another word for need that we talked about? Would it be require? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha, that fits and it makes sense. Babies require care and attention. That's true. So that's the correct answer. Number four. I gave the beep of my lunch to the dog. I gave the what of my lunch to the dog? Well, think about that. Do you have a dog? When you eat food, your dog looks at you like this, right? So after you finish eating, maybe you don't eat everything, so you give what's left 
to your dog, right? What is left is the what? It's the remains. You give the remains of your lunch, maybe a piece of bread or maybe some rice or maybe a piece of apple. Dogs eat apples, right? So you give the remains of your lunch to your dog. But don't do that, actually, because your dog will beg you every time you eat, right? So it's not good to give the remains of your lunch or dinner to your dog. Give them their food separately. Okay, next one, number five down. New cars will beep the older cars. Remember we talked about this. You change one thing for another. If something's old that doesn't work, you remove it and you put a new one in its place. What are you doing? You are replacing. New cars will replace the older cars. So you will replace, you will replace the old one with a new one. Replace new cars uh, to, uh, new cars will replace the older cars. They will replace the older cars. Okay. Number six, it is beep, but not easy. So when we talk about, this is a little bit more difficult, right? This, you can do many things. Some things you can do are very easy, but some things you can do are very hard. Don't give up. Even though it's very hard, you can do it. It's what? It's possible. It's possible, but not easy. Just because something is hard or not easy doesn't mean it's not possible, right? Many things in your life will be hard to do, but you can do it. It's possible. It is possible to do. Okay, that wraps it up for the vocabulary uh, crossword puzzle. It's kind of fun uh, putting a crossword puzzle together, isn't it? But in every crossword puzzle, you have to find the clues across and then down, and you can mix them up. And of course, remember, pay attention to the number of letters in each box. Okay, well, let's take a short break here. We'll come back soon, and we'll go over the reading passage together. Hey guys, welcome back to the reading section. Let's continue with this lesson talking about fossil fuels. Let's go over the reading first. Uh, let's read it together. What do plants have to do with pollution? Aren't plants good for the earth? The plants we see around us help keep the air clean. This passage starts off in an interesting way. <clears throat> because it's asking kind of an interesting question. What do plants have to do? When we think about plants and pollution, we don't think that plants make pollution. It's kind of strange to think about that. So that's why we have this question, what do plants have to do with something else? It's a strange combination. What do plants have to do with pollution? Plants don't pollute the earth. Plants are good for the earth. So that's what this question is asking us. It's making us think about a strange relationship or a relationship we don't normally think about. And that's, you know, aren't plants good for the earth? That's continuing that idea, that same idea that plants, why do plants have something to do with pollution, right? They're supposed to be good for the earth. They're not bad for the earth. They don't pollute the earth. Why do they have something to do with pollution? Well, the plants we see around us, those plants, the plants we see right now, help keep the air clean. That's true, because plants take in air, carbon dioxide, and they give off oxygen. In that process, they clean the air. If we're around many plants or in a forest, we can breathe nice, fresh air, right? Plants help keep the air clean. But those are plants we see around us. The plants we see now, the plants of today, however. But plants from 300 million years ago are polluting the planet. Ah, there's our answer. How is this possible? Let's learn about how plants from long ago can cause pollution today. So it's interesting the way this reading started out. It started out by saying, the plants we see around us are good for the earth. How are they bad for the earth? How can they pollute the earth? It's not the plants we see every day, it's the plants 
that lived 300 million years ago, a long time ago, right? Those plants are polluting the planet. They're polluting the earth. How? How is that possible? How can that be? How can plants that lived such a long time ago, how can they pollute the earth now? That's what this passage is about. That's the topic of this passage. So, let's learn about how plants from long ago can cause pollution today. The reading will answer those questions that we asked. Let's find out. We require a lot of energy to heat our homes, run our cars, and light our cities. Most of this energy comes from fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. We have two good sentences here, two good sentence uh, constructions here. First, we require, we need, right? We need energy. In our modern life, we use a lot of energy, don't we? We use energy. This sentence tells us or gives us three examples of how we need energy. Do you see the three examples? The first one is to heat our homes. That's the first one, right? This too goes for each one, right? We need a lot of energy to heat our homes, to run our cars. That's the second one. To light our cities. That's the third one. This too, right here, that's the first part of the infinitive verb form, and it goes with the three verbs. To heat our homes, to run, to light. Notice that all the verbs are the same form. Heat, run, light. That is parallel structure. Parallel structure. So it is a very good structure to look for when you're reading. Also, if you're writing, use parallel structure. Don't change the verb forms. All the verbs have to be the same form. If you use infinitive, they're all infinitive. If you use gerund, ing, they're all ing. In this case, they're all infinitive, root form of the verb. To heat, to run, to light. So those are the three ways that we require a lot of energy, right? The next sentence is similar. Most of this energy comes from fossil fuels, like. Now this tells us we're going to get three examples of fossil fuels, okay? Fossil fuels, there's three kinds of fossil fuels. What are they? Number one is coal. Oops, <laughs> one looks like a V. Number two is oil. And number three is natural gas. Coal, oil, and natural gas are examples of fossil fuels. And this word here, like, indicates that it's going to give us an example. Right? There are many kinds, there are many types of fossil fuels, like, for example, coal, oil, and natural gas. Three examples. So we have two sentences here that are kind of similar in their construction. One of them tells us, uh, it gives us examples of how we use or how we need a lot of energy. The second sentence, sentence gives us examples of what kinds of fossil fuels there are, right? So these are good uh, types of sentences. Okay, but anyway, talks about, of course, our overall topic. You know, we need a lot of energy. We use these types of fossil fuels. Now, burning fossil fuels may give us the energy we need, but this also creates a lot of air pollution. When fossil fuels are burned, they release harmful gases that mix with our clean air. So here we get to the idea of pollution, right? Before we see we need fossil fuels, we need energy. We get energy from fossil fuels. Now when we burn, when we burn those fossil fuels, that may give us, sure, that, that's possible, it makes it possible to get the energy we need. So we need that energy for those three things, right? So we get the energy by burning fossil fuels. However, but, right? If we get the energy we need, that's a positive thing. But there's a negative thing, and we say but. Positive, negative, opposites, pandero, we use but. 
but this also creates a lot of air pollution. That's the negative thing. Give us the energy we need, that's positive. Creates a lot of pollution, that's negative. We're combining those two ideas, we use but. When fossil fuels are burned, they release, they release, they give off, they let go. Harmful gases, harmful gases, dangerous gases, gases that are not good for us or the environment, that mix, they mix, they get together with our clean air. Usually our air is clean, natural air is clean. We can breathe it very well. But when we burn fossil fuels, when we drive a car, when we build a factory, when we produce energy, we're giving off uh, uh, bad gases that mix with our clean air, and it's hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe in the city, isn't it? With many cars going by, oh, the pollution, air pollution is not good. Okay, this is a big problem in urban areas where there are many people. Huge amounts of fossil fuels are burned in big cities. Industrial cities like London, England in the late 1800s had so much smoke in the air that it was hard to see the sun. Wow, let's go over this in more detail. Okay. We were just talking about, you know, we burn energy, that creates air pollution, mixes with our clean air. That, this, this idea or this process, this circumstance is a big problem, especially in urban areas, in cities. Urban means city. Urban area, that's a city. Why? Because there are many people together. So many people together need more and more energy. So huge amounts, huge amounts, a lot of fossil fuels are burned in big cities because there's so many people. Each person has to have certain energy needs. They have to heat their house. They have to drive their car. They have to uh, use electricity for their homes. Right? So more people, more fossil fuels are burned, more air pollution is created. Industrial cities. We talked about industrial means having to do with a lot of factories. Uh, factories and machines, the whole idea of using machines to create power was born in England and especially London, England. That's where factories were first developed especially in the late 1800s. It's part of the Industrial Revolution, right? So industrial cities like London, England in the late 1800s, they didn't think about the pollution. They just saw, hey, we can use machines instead of people. We can save money. We can make more things. So they didn't think about the pollution. They just had many factories. And the problem was it created so much smoke, so much that. When you see so much, you need to expect that later on. So much something, that, and then the result. Okay? So much smoke in the air. This is kind of like the cause, and this is the result. There was so much smoke in the air that it was hard to see the sun. Imagine that. So much smoke. There's so much smoke in the air, you cannot even see the sun on a day where there's no clouds in the sky. That's terrible. That's really bad pollution. So much Momo, that, and then result. Okay? Okay, here's a picture of a, a video of coal. This kind of shows, you know, a, a, a coal factory or a coal mining uh, a place. And this is a coal mine, obviously. There's many big uh, equipment, front end loader. And then you, maybe this is a haul truck in the background. Um, but this is what a typical mine looks like, right? In this case, this is a coal mine. I actually used to work at a gold mine a long time ago. I wasn't digging. I was in human resources. But anyway, um, this is what it looks like. Many modern mines look like this. They have big uh, machines, big vehicles to move the dirt around, and the dirt is carried on conveyor belts. So this coal is taken up into a place where it can be shipped to different places so people can use the coal for different purposes. Okay, let's come back to the reading. Many people got sick. 
Okay, again, we're thinking about London, England in the late 1800s. Many people got sick and had trouble breathing. Okay, so because of all this air pollution, so much smoke in the air that we can't see the sun, we're breathing that smoke. People get sick. They have a hard time breathing. So what does all this have to do with plants? We come back to the question that we asked at the beginning of the passage. What do plants have to do with pollution? So what does all this, all this, you know, fossil fuels, burning uh, uh, fossil fuels, making smoke, mixing with clean air, what has all that have to do with plants? What does it have to do with? How is it related? What is the effect? What is the cause and effect relationship? What does it have to do with? Good question. What, is it ha what does all this have to do with plants? Well, well, <laughs> fossil fuels are formed from plants. Over time, plant remains change into coal, oil, and natural gas. But this process takes millions of years. That means fossil fuels can't be replaced quickly or easily. So this explains what plants have to do with pollution today. First of all, we see fossil fuels are formed from plants. Formed. Remember, form means to come together to make something or to create something. Those fossil fuels we heard about before, oil, gas, natural gas, uh, those are made. Where do they come from? They come from plants that died a long, long time ago. Over time, it takes a long time, over time, plant remains. Remains here is a noun. Remain can also be a verb. For example, I will remain here. But it's not a verb here. It can be a little confusing. Plant remains. No, no, no. Not the plants stay there. The leftover parts of the plants. When the plants die, what's left? That's what we're talking about. Plant remains. The remains of the plants. Change into coal, oil, and natural gas are three types of fossil fuels. Coal, oil, natural gas. They come from plants. Did you know that? That's very interesting. By the way, it's not just plants. It's also animals, dinosaurs. Their dead bodies are turned into coal, oil, and natural gas, too. So not just plants, it's also animals. But plants also a big part of it. But this process, it takes a long time, step-by-step -step process. It takes millions of years. We can't imagine a million years. I mean, the Earth has been around for millions and millions, billions of years, but we can't even imagine one million year, much less 300 million years. It's such a long time, right? We haven't even been around for a million years. We've only, human beings have only been around for about 200,000 years, right? So a millions and millions of years, that's a long time. We can't imagine how long that is. But this process takes millions of years. That means the fact that the process takes millions of years, that fact means fossil fuels can't be replaced quickly or easily, of course, right? We can't make new oil, natural gas, or coal. We would have to wait a million years. Can we wait a million years? No, <laughs> maybe we won't live that long, right? Of course, we won't live that long. We can't even imagine what a million years in the future will be like. We can't imagine that. We can't replace these fuels quickly or easily. Today, we are using fossil fuels faster than they are being made. One day, the earth will run out. Let's conserve our fossil fuels to make sure this doesn't happen. Okay, so what we're saying here is today we're using fossil fuels faster than they are being made. Right now, fossil fuels are being made, right? It takes millions of years. It's a very, very slow process. But right now, it's happening. It's been happening for millions and millions of years. It will continue to happen for millions and millions of years. But the problem is we're using those things. We're using oil, natural gas, coal faster 
then they can be made. If you use something faster than it can be made, obviously one day, one day in the future, you will run out. At some point in time, we'll run out of fossil fuels. We won't have any more because we're using them too fast, right? If your mother buys a bag of potato chips every week and you eat the potato chips very quickly, you eat them all in two days, you ran out. You have to wait until next week when your mom buys a new bag of potato chips, right? But if you think about it, if it's, if it's such a long time, your mom only buys potato chips once every 20 years, <laughs> right? You eat all the potato chips, you ran out. What are you going to do for those years until you get new potato chips? It's kind of a, a very simple example, but it's a kind of the same idea. Okay. So the idea is let's conserve, let's save our fossil fuels to make sure this doesn't happen. Or in other words, eat just a small portion of potato chips each day. Let's conserve, save them, slow down on how quickly you eat them or use them so they last for a long time and you don't, they don't run out. So this run out, it doesn't happen. You don't run out. Okay. It's a good idea. Okay, so now we've come to our reading comprehension questions. And as always, the first question is, what is this story about? What is the general subject or topic of the reading passage? We have our four choices here. A, industry, B, pollution, C, urban areas, and D, coal, oil, and natural gas. Now this is a little bit more himdero, difficult, right? Because we could say it's about plants, right? But plants is not one of our choices here, right? What we're talking about, let's go over the choices. One is industry. Industry. Did we talk about industry? Well, we talked about industry in a little bit. We talked about industrial London. We talked about industrial areas creating uh, uh, smoke or, or pollution in the air that mixes with the clean air, but that wasn't the main subject of the reading passage. It was only a small part. It was a detail. B, this story is about pollution. We talked about pollution quite a bit, but that wasn't the overall subject of the passage, right? We didn't talk about pollution we, uh, in terms of, you know, what types of different pollution there are or uh, how pollution is really created in air, land, or water. So we really didn't talk about pollution as the subject of the reading passage. It was a part of the sub of reading passage, but it wasn't the overall subject. C, urban areas. Urban areas we only talked about very briefly. It was one of the details. When we were talking about using fossil fuels, people uh, in urban areas use a lot more fossil fuels. They need more and more of it. And so the pollution that they create is, is more and more there. But that was just a small detail. What we're really talking about in this passage is coal, oil, and natural gas, okay? Of course, plants have created these, and as I said before, also animals, right? Dinosaurs and animals that lived a long, long time ago. So, but we're really talking about coal, oil, and natural gas, fossil fuels. How are they made? What do we use them for? What is the negative effect of fossil fuels, and also, that we have to be careful about using fossil fuels because one day they will run out. So all of this passage, we talked about many different aspects or many different concerns or issues about coal, oil, and natural gas. That was the main subject of the reading passage. Okay, number two. We use the energy from beep to heat our homes. What do we use the energy from? Where do we get our energy, right? Do we get our energy from waves? Waves, what kind of waves? The ocean waves? Light waves? Yeah, sound waves? No, we didn't talk about waves at all, right? Uh, B, the moon. We get our energy from the moon. Yes, no, sorry, we don't get our energy from the moon. That's a little crazy, right? We don't get any energy from the moon. Do we get energy from factories? Well, you could say, yeah, there are power plants, our factories, but that's not the real source of the energy. Uh, I mean, we have C and D left. Where does the energy really come from? Where is, what is the original source? Is it the factories 
or fossil fuels. Well, it's fossil fuels, of course. Factories is like the middle man, right? Fossil fuels are transported to factories, turned into forms we can use, and then it comes to us. So you could say we use the energy from factories, but really we use the energy from fossil fuels. That's where the origin, where it starts, right? Factories just change the fossil fuels into forms that we can use, okay? So we get our energy from fossil fuels to heat our homes. Okay, number three, fossil fuels beep when they are burned. What happens to fossil fuels or what is true about fossil fuels when they are burned and we get energy from them. Fossil fuels can be replaced when they are burned. No, they can't be replaced when they are burned. It takes millions of years to replace fossil fuels and burning is not something you do to replace them, <laughs> right? Doesn't make sense. Fossil fuels requires a lot of energy. Well, first of all, we'd have to get S out of there because that's plural, but anyway, that kind of tells us it's a wrong answer anyway. Uh, require a lot of energy. Fossil fuels require a lot of energy when they're burned? No. Fossil fuels generate energy when they're burned. That's not right. Fossil fuels release harmful gases. Is that true? Yes, that's what we're talking about. One of the main subjects that we're talking about is that fossil fuels release harmful gases and that creates air pollution. Okay, so fossil fuels release harmful gases when they are burned, that creates air pollution. Fossil fuels go to London, England? <laughs> That's kind of silly, right? That's incorrect. Fossil fuels, oh, you're burning me. I got to jump on a train to London. No, that's crazy, right? Uh, so that's just a silly answer. The right answer, of course, is C. Fossil fuels release harmful gases when they are burned. We burn fossil fuels to get energy. That's positive. That's how we get energies. But the negative side is that they release harmful gases. Okay, number four. Fossil fuels are made of what? What are fossil fuels made of? We talked about uh, uh, one thing in particular that fossil fuels are made of. Hardened lava. Hey, wait a minute, that's from another lesson, right? That's from a lesson we studied a little while ago. Lava, of course, is the molten rock that comes up from the earth, right? But we're not talking about that in this unit, and besides, it's not true anyway. Lava doesn't create energy. Lava is just uh, rock, right? Hardened lava is just rock. B, plant remains. Ah, fossil fuels are made of plant remains. That's what the whole passage was about at the beginning. Remember, it said, what do plants have to do with fossil fuels or pollution, right? What's the connection? We found out that plants a long time ago that died and their remains are made into or are turned into coal, natural gas, and oil. Those are fossil fuels. So fossil fuels are made of plant remains, the leftover parts of plants not old garbage, and not smoke and gases. It's plant remains. Okay, so how can we wrap up this lesson? By saying certain things about fossil fuels. And of course, this is one type of fossil fuel. We talked about three. This is just one. This is coal, right? The other two are oil and natural gas. What can we say about fossil fuels? Well, one thing we can say is um, that plants from 300 million years ago are polluting the planet. They're not doing it by themselves. We're using plants from 300 million years ago, and while, as we use them, we are polluting the planet. It's a negative effect, okay? We can also say most energy comes from fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. So most of our energy comes from those three sources that are made from plant remains from a long time ago. And finally, when fossil fuels are burned, they release harmful gases that mix with our clean air. Okay, so that's basically like a summary of this lesson. The fact that we use uh, fossil fuels. Fossil fuels were made of plant remains, plants that died millions and millions, hundreds of millions of years ago, right? Those 
Uh, plant remains are, are formed into three types of energy. We have oil, we have gas, and we have coal, as we can see in this picture. So those are our three types. And when we burn those fossil fuels, when they are burned, we release harmful gases into the air. They mix with our clean air and makes pollution. So it's a very interesting lesson. It, it shows us that we have a problem nowadays, right? We have to be careful. We have to save these fossil fuels. We can't use them too fast. We have to conserve them because one day we'll run out. Okay, well that about wraps it up for today. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.